Hey folks, AJ the CEO here, and in this video, we're going to walk you through how to create a Facebook page or a Facebook group for your ministry and what's the difference between both of them. So let's go. Hey folks, AJ the CEO here. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, thanks for stopping by. And on this channel, we focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you like what we're doing here, consider becoming a patron or a YouTube member by clicking one of the links down below. Now, I've had a lot of people um, ask me about this. So this is the reason why we're doing the video. And I want to explain their two differences between a Facebook group and a Facebook page. All right. So let's talk about a Facebook group first. There are three options that you can, the type of group that you can make. You can make it public, closed, or secret. So public obviously means anybody can find it closed, meaning that anybody can see it, but you have to be admitted to it. And then secret, you can't even search for it. You can only get it is if somebody invites you kind of like fight club, you don't talk about fight club, stuff like that. Um, now there are benefits to each one of these. Me personally, I don't believe that a group is a good option for your ministry. Um, because uh, and we'll explain that later. Now, if you happen to want to do something um, for your church to where you want to disseminate certain information that you don't want to be public, you might want to do a closed group or maybe a secret group. It all depends. Um, it depends on how you want to set it up. Um, me personally, I don't use a group for my ministry. I use a group for our Facebook group for this channel for Modern Media Ministry Made Easy because that is a closed group where you need to be admitted um, to get into so everybody and their mama just can't join it unless they answer these questions. And it's not secret because we want people to be able to find it. All right, so now when it comes to pages, a page for your ministry is just like your personal page on Facebook. It is the profile of your ministry, meaning that you can still have rules on that page, but the page is just like a business page to where anybody can search for it. It represents the profile of your ministry. Now you can have rules to allow people to post to it, or you have to have authorization for people to post to it, or only certain people can post to it. Also that gives you a centralized location to live stream from. Now you can live stream from either one of those, um, a group or a page. I lean more towards a page, um, and just realize no matter what you're streaming, there are no, there are no different rules. Um, you can't stream music you don't own on the page. You can't stream music you don't own on a group. All of that is exactly the same. Um, and then the difference is you can make multiple people to be admins on the page or group. So a lot of those functions are different. Me personally, I just think a page is better to represent your ministry. Just think of a page just like your website, but it's a profile page for your ministry on Facebook that you still don't own. But again, just know um, that's the differences between those. Um, it all depends. So like if you have a, a group of ministries that work together and they're uh, a group coming together, that would be more for a group to where you might not want that, all that information being public, not in a bad way, but you know, you might be talking about the in church's finances. So like, for example, you can make a group under the main church page that's public for everybody, but Hey, you set up a group, a private group or a secret group for just members of the ministry so that y'all can, you know, pass information back and forth, have a directory that people can look up, something like that, anything like that. But I'm not going to go that deep in that stuff. What we're going to do now is I'm going to go over to my other profile on Facebook and we're going to walk through creating a page as well as a group. And it's really simple. So let's go ahead and cut over and do that now. All right. So I'm going to use my gaming profile because I already got more than enough groups <laughs> on my um, regular account. All right, so what we're going to do is come over here to this nice little plus here beside our name here and create. And we're just going to come down here and we're going to do a page. All right. 
So we're going to give it a name. So I'm going to say prototype church. Um, category, we're going to say religious center or organization. It doesn't really matter. I'll do organization this time around. And I'm going to say um, this is the Facebook page for Prototype Church. Give it a description, something, something meaningful. All right. And then, boom, we hit the create page. Give it a second. And guess what? That's it. Now we can come in here, add a profile picture, add a cover, and you can do all of this in Canva if you wanted to. Again, I'm not going through this part. Well, actually, let's go ahead and just add a nice little picture just to make it easy, shall we? So I'm going to go over here to Canva. And let's go here and look up Facebook cover. And... I'm just going to do something very, very generic. Yeah, we'll just do something like this. All right, let's go ahead and download that. Now let's get over here and now we're going to just add our cover page, which is what we had just made. And we can reposition it and boom. All right. Now we've saved it. So now we actually have our page. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to create a username. Now, if you've been following anything that I'm talking about before, we talk about having a digital handle. Um, that way, that's your name online that um, separates you from every other prototype church or whatever the name of your ministry is online. So at my church, we are Antioch Verina. So that's what our name would be. And just for this, I would just call this um, prototype church. Now be careful with this because I don't believe you can change this. Um, you want to make sure you want to secure your brand, your, your name, your digital handle. And the idea is I would use this name with everything else that's being created for this ministry to make it easy. So Antioch Verona is everywhere like us. And this is what you want to be careful of when you make this. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and create mine. You're not eligible because that name is not available. Okay, so here's an example of where you might not be able to do that. So let's do prototype hyphen church. Proto church. All right, so it looks like I'm not available for this, some of the names I'm coming up with. But that just shows the example. You got to really be Johnny on the spot to make sure you get your name secured. All right. Now, we're just going to go through the rest of this and help set up this page, establish a church's identity. I mean, your page's identity. Um, some of the stuff we've already done. Description. Yep. All right. Um, next steps. If we had our website, we would link it to this. So all right. Add a location. You know, you could put your address. I'm just gonna say I don't have one. Um your hours. I'll say no hours available. Phone number, um, you can connect a bunch of stuff. You can even add a button here so you can have this button go to your Givelify, your Tithely, your online type of contributions if you want to. And then next thing we have is introduce your page. This is where you can create a, a welcome post, invite 
folks to it, you know, stuff like that. And all of that is pretty straightforward after there. You know, you just follow the prompts to fill everything out. Now, on this left side, you're going to have some more access to your page. But let's just look through the page first here. Everybody's not going to see all this stuff. Now, the other benefit inside of this is you can, remember we talked about the differences between pages and groups. You can make a group that's private or secret and link it to this. So if people in your ministry decide to like the page, but you want to have a members only type of group to discuss certain things inside the ministry, you can create a group and link it to the page. Um, So that gives you some benefits here. You can do events and then you have reviews, videos, photos about community, and you can edit all these tabs. So it gives you a whole lot of control of what you can do in here. Now, what we want to do is let's click on, um, let's go over here to our settings. And let's see what else we can do here. So we have all these other options, messaging. This is the tab you would get when people are contacting you um, or sending messages to the page or trying to contact you. Just like if anybody was sending an email, this is how you can get messages that way. Um, you got your page information, which is what we've already talked about. And it looks like Facebook is having some issues. All right. You got templates and tabs. So this is where you can turn some of this stuff on and off. Like, um, Mike, it's up to you. You can leave a review or what we would call it more testimonials about the ministry. You, You can leave that up if you want. And there's other things you can turn on services, jobs, live. So I'm going to turn this on because I want to show live videos on your page. All right. Event ticketing. So you can set this up to where if you want to have events on your page, um, your ministry, whether it be like a patron's list or concerts or any type of activity that normally it would be like a paid event where somebody needs a ticket. You can actually set that up directly on your Facebook page. All right, notifications. This will tell you how you're going to be contacted, how much information you would get. Um, Advanced. And this is how you can change um, how often you're getting notified and all this other stuff. But we'll cover that in another video if you want me to. Now, page roles. This is really important because this is how you can link other people to become administers, administrators or any type of other role here on the page. So you have editor, another admin, moderator, advertiser, and analyst. Mainly, I have editors and admins. I want to have at least one other person be an admin. Um, so if I ever decide to leave the ministry, it can somebody else has full access to it. Um, And then you can add other people to be editors if they want to add content to the page, but you don't want them to have access to the settings and changing the page overall. You can do something like that. Um, You can make a new role if you want um, and, you know, switch all the stuff. So this is how, especially from a media ministry standpoint, say you want to have your, your pastor to be able to add content. You can make them as an editor, but you don't want them to be an admin because they, you know, they might not know their way around it. You don't want somebody to accidentally delete something. Keep the keys in very few hands um, and make sure that somebody in your trustees or however your board is, they have access to that information if you decide to leave. Um, But that's how you can add more people. And then you could always link other pages if you had them. So like say your youth ministry has a page, you could link it to them this way. So all of them are under one umbrella. Preferred page audience. Um, We're not going to go over that because I just made the page. So we can't really even go over that. Um, Issue electoral or political ads. Um, I don't even, this is new. So me personally, I'd rather not have anything on here, but I'll come back to that later. Ad limits. Um, this is again how you can put ads on the left side of your page. I guess give permissions on what needs to go there or not. I'm gonna leave that alone. Um, branded content. 
Again, this is more if you wanted to do some more high end stuff, and we'll talk about that later if you want to cover that. All right. Now, you also have Instagram because Facebook owns Instagram. If you have an account based off of your handle, which will ideally want to be the exact same, you could link it together. So that way, when you somebody sends a message on Instagram, it shows up here. You can make a post on Facebook. It will post on Instagram and vice versa automatically. Same way with WhatsApp. You can link it if you're using that. Then under featured, we really don't have anything, so we don't have any links to feature right now. And this is the cross posting. If you had multiple pages, like if you had a youth ministry, like I said, under here and you're an admin, when you make a post on the main one, it can go post in other places as well. Um, and for the most part, that's it. That's how now you have your your whole church page has been set up and now from a ministry standpoint, you can come in here to go live and now you can live stream to your Facebook ministries page. Now, if you're doing stuff like we talk about, um, we would go through our stream key and all this other stuff here. Um, but if you're using your camera or um, your phone or your tablet, you can come here to use that and link it this way. Um, and those are the main two that we work with right now. Now, some suggestions, if you're going to use your page for live streaming off of Facebook, go ahead and check off persistent key. That would mean that this does not change. Um, I'm going to reset this afterwards. So obviously y'all are seeing it, but not like I'm going to use this, um, but set it to persistent key. So that way this key does not change. Once you set it in OBS or your ATEM or whatever your streaming software, you should not have to change this unless something a security update has been pushed for Facebook to let you know that you need to update it. But for the most part, this does not have to change. All right. So we have other options here for streaming. Do you want to end the live video? If the stream stops, you might want to turn that off. If you have spotty internet, because the last thing you want is, Oh, your internet went down. It ends your stream. So I would turn that off. Um, embed live video. Keep this on. If you ever want to take your video and post it on your website or something like that. Makes it real easy just to leave that on. And then other settings you have. Broadcast this as a spherical video. If you're not using a 360 degree camera, obviously leave this off. Um, unpublish after your live video ends. That's dependent on your media ministry. For example, what we used to do when we were editing if you watch our stream live, you can watch it. But once the stream ends, it becomes unpublished because we go in and edit the video, cut out the fluff, have an intro, or outro, put lower thirds and everything like that. And we upload that as a replacement. So that's your workflow if you want to do that. Now, let's go to viewing. Allow viewers to rewind. Nothing the matter with that. Allow viewers to message you. Viewers can message you directly through Messenger from your live video. That's up to you. Um, if you have, that's mainly if you have somebody monitoring the messages. Um, so I'm going to just turn that on. All right. And then we also have comments. Do you want to allow people to do certain comments? Only allow followers to leave a comment. Slow the comments down. So it's actually 10 seconds slower. Might not want to do that in um, the ministry unless you got something really big. Somebody might be saying amen or something like that to a good point that's being ministered to or a song or something like that. It's up to you. Um, restricted commenters must have an account um, for at least two weeks. You know, allow uh, commenters must have followed you for at least 15 minutes. That's up to you to do. Um, but these will give you some options that you can play around with just in case you might start getting some hecklers or something like that on your page you want to keep it kind of streamlined so now by doing this you can now stream to your facebook page for your ministry and then obviously you want to start growing i mean over here you know you want to put your title all this other stuff oh i might as well go over these sections too um this is where just like that you could cross post to multiple pages. So if you're live streaming, you can put a page on the youth ministry page or whatever pages that we've linked under this um, page or as the individual, like this account. If I have access to multiple pages, I could 
cross post them to all of these at the same time if I wanted to. Now, under audience settings, you want, do you want to set an age limit um, restricted to certain locations? You could do that there. This isn't gaming, so I'm not going to do that. Now, this, if this was a ticketed event, you can say that you restrict that the only way you can watch this is if you got a ticket to the event. So that's really cool. And also, if you want to start testing, which I always recommend that you're constantly still testing to perfect the craft of live streaming on Facebook, you can come in here and check off publish a test broadcast and you can start live streaming, do the same thing that you normally would do, but only administrators of the page will be able to see it. No one will be notified that you're live streaming. So this is a very good example of testing and perfecting. And I mean, I honestly recommend you at least do a test broadcast, test everything that you got um, during the week. So you're not trying to rush and do this on a Sunday morning. Always test. Always. It's, it's, you constantly want to perfect your craft and you want to don't just try and do this on Sunday five minutes before you need to do practice it. Especially if you're adding people as admins, they can do this and test this at home. They don't necessarily have to be at church. Get yourself a $30 webcam. Test it out just to make sure you know the whole process. All right. And I think that is everything when it comes to setting up a page for your ministry. Um, all right. So I think that part is done. Um, and I think some, they have some new features here that I'm really not going to go into, but if you want me to, I will. All right. So let's go all the way back to my profile here. And now we're going to do the same thing, but now it's going to be a group. Now let's go over here to our plus here. Um, let's go to group. And look, it almost looks exactly the same. All right. Church members. I'll just call it that. And this is where we set our privacy. I'm going to set this as private, meaning that it is members only. And now hide group. Is it visible or is it completely hidden? Meaning that if it's visible, people can search for it, but they can't join it unless they are allowed access into it. So I'm going to do this because say this might be we're holding live streams of church meetings and you don't want all the information going out. So I'm going to do it like that. All right. So let's go ahead and create it. And we're pretty much going to have similar settings. So let's come over here and we're going to edit this picture here. And we're just going to just use the exact same picture, but you can always change it any way you want to. All righty. Now, again, with your members, you have some different options. Do you want to um, automatically give certain members access so we can set up a criteria um, you could almost say like if you're in a certain city, if someone is already in your group, um, joined at least, you know, you can do certain automatic stuff. So like, for example, um, I don't know, say if you're doing a, a group for a collection of ministries, you could just say if anybody is a part of this, likes this one ministries page, they can automatically be added. Um, you can also do membership questions to allow people to come in. You could check off certain questions, and if they answer them, they have, they have to answer the questions first, and you can set it to automatically admit people after they answer these questions. That's how I have it on our Facebook group. So always, everybody's always asking, AJ, how can I join the Modern Media Ministry group? I was like, really? You just got to answer the questions, and it will automatically allow you to come in. So I'm not going to do those. Um, you have pending posts, pretty much almost the exact same thing. But the difference is you also have this member reported content. If you have people posting in your group and it breaks kind of the rules that you deem appropriate for your group, this will show that people can report them and you can take actions from here. So like in our group, there's no live streaming allowed in our group. So 
if I had a group, somebody live streaming in here, somebody reports it, it would show up here. I can delete the post, give the person a seven day or whatever amount of warning so they can't post anything again or completely kick them out the group or kick them out the group and then they can never, ever join again. <laughs> it gives you that option as well, too. Um, so the settings, pretty much you have the exact same settings, just a little bit more. You can give it a web address, set a color, do mentorship programs, do a lot more um, member type of things um, that you can have. And again, I like groups for a standpoint if you want to share information to a limited amount of people and you don't want it public. Um, but you can come in here and go live the exact same way if you wanted to, and the live would be here in the group. But because I created both, and I'm an admin for both, I can actually come in here and either live, I can come in here and change it and say I want to live stream to the church's page. So say that's a regular typical service or, oh, we have a private event that's meant for just the members of our ministry. Then I can switch it over here and select that members here. So now the only people who are going to see it or be notified are the people who are in the group. Now, depending on if your group is private, you also are not allowed to share anything from the group because no one can see it. Unless you're a part of the group. So that's another benefit there. So the same settings that we had for our live stream are exactly the same. So I hope that helps. Let me know if there's anything else that you'd like me to go over in detail from here. Because granted, I spent more time on the page than the group. Because everything that you do in the page you can do in a group is just locked down to who can or can't see it from a group standpoint. And I'm just giving my honest opinion on how I would use them. You can use them any way you want to, but just know that if you have a private group and if you don't add anybody, don't give anybody permissions to post and all this other stuff, you're not going to really have that interaction there. And personally, I think a page is better for that, but pick whichever one you feel is appropriate for your ministry. So, if you like this type of content, I appreciate a like, consider subscribing, and hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. I want to thank the patrons for making this video possible. Their name's on the screen right now, and you too can become a patron for as little as $1 a month. Or you can click the join button below and become a YouTube member. And no matter which way you pick, folks, you're helping us train media ministries all over the world. Thanks for watching again, folks. This is AJ, and we will see you on the next video later.